Hello, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is, well, right now it's September 9th of 2019, but in two minutes it will be September 10th of 2019. Uh, I wanted to mention a, uh, a few things. You know, I keep you updated on stuff that you're probably not really interested in. But let me update you again. I'm back to one monitor. And that's my uh, LG 4K monitor. And I actually have it in 4K mode. And, uh, you know, getting the presets and everything set just right, you know. Uh, one person recommended, uh, what, uh, 125. I guess Microsoft recommends, uh, well, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to here. And uh, system. Let me take this out of the, uh, off the screen. You don't need to see that. Go to display, and down here you'll see that you can set in here the uh, custom scale factor or whatever. <clears throat> Normally it would be at like 100%. Let's say you have a 1920 by 1080, it would be, you know, set it to 100 and everything would be just right. The only problem is when you go to uh, a 4K monitor and it's set at 100 you know, you need a micro microscope just about to see. So, uh, Microsoft recommends setting it to 150. And one guy on YouTube, I checked from YouTube, he recommended 125. And just, I can't seem to, maybe because my eyes, you know, I'm 78 years old and what have you. But anyway, I have it set to 175 now. Uh, so, uh, well, let me pull this back up over here so I can see what you see. As you can see, I have the one monitor set at 4K mode. And I hooked up my printer. We have two printers. One's in the other room wirelessly, you know, Wi-Fi connected. This one here I hooked up to USB. I actually haven't gone through the settings to make sure that it's recognized. I don't print uh, very much, but I do want to... I'm really lazy. I, I want, <laughs> want to scan some photographs. I have old family photographs. And I want to uh, get them scanned before the, you know, the light destroys them, before they fade out and all that type of stuff. So, And I should just sit down and do it, do it, do it, you know, put them on there. There's also companies that you can send your photographs to, and they'll do it, but I really can't afford to have that done. Um The other thing I want, a couple of things I wanted to mention. Well, let me pull up the CNN news page so you know what's going on there. Uh, you can sort of look at my videos. Usually I have the CNN page. You'll be, pop up and you can get a little idea of when it, you know, when it was, what was going on. Um, I posted this video uh, yesterday, and it's, uh, the, uh, Weather Bureau disavows, uh, the National Weather Service tweet that they made when Trump, uh, commented about the storm hitting Alabama, and um, 
that got me thinking, and a few other people commented also that, uh, let me pull this up, but I'm not going to, you know. Um, got me thinking that with Trump uh, saying that, uh, you know, the Weather Bureau was, you know, incorrect and that uh, they tweeted out or, you know, refuted him and then the higher up administrative or whatever uh, tweeted out and refuted uh, or uh, or they put out a uh, announcement saying that the uh, weather department people, whatever their people, you know, their their subordinates, that they were incorrect in uh, refuting the. Uh, uh, Trump's claim and that's sad because those people should be sticking up for what's right and correct and for their you know for their employees the people down but they caved apparently you know apparently Trump said you know and they did it and now there are some people wondering you know did they did Noah actually do that. I mean, he may have ordered them to do it, and maybe they refused or whatever. And I mean, there's you can't put anything past him now. Maybe he had somebody in the White House, you know, <laughs> get stationary, and uh, make, you just don't know now. We can't tell anything. And that's what was getting me and a few others I've seen comment about with Trump doing what he's doing. It's going to be where you can't believe anything that he says. And also, you know, in the future, if uh, when the well, not if, you know, when the Weather Department puts out, um, you know, weather notices, are people going to say some, you know, are Trump type of people going to say, oh, that's fake news for whatever reason? They may say, well, that's fake news for some political reason. I can't think what the political reason would be, but where they might say, well, that's fake news because what they're trying to do is get us all to go to the buy water and buy gasoline and make money for, you know, you just don't know what, when something like this happens, what can happen. That got me thinking about uh, the uh, Ruskin tornado back in 1958, I believe, um, in Kansas City, Missouri area. Ruskin actually is part of part of Kansas City, Missouri, uh, but I think it's I don't forget exactly how it worked out. But like Ruskin Heights, they had their own school district and stuff like that. So I mean, like Ruskin Heights wasn't a city, but it was in Kansas City, Missouri, and part of Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, so that got me thinking about that. And so I um, commented on, well, people were commenting. In fact, I think there's been like only 115 views, but we got seven thumbs up, four thumbs down. I shouldn't say we, I mean I did on this video. And um, well, let me go, let's see, I'm already at it, aren't I? Let's see. Why is it displaying like well I uh, I added to this in the oh I guess I gotta do this comment section I gotta do that top gum to show okay here's the comments there again I'm not sure why that was looking that way maybe that's because 4K and I've got, you know, it's, I don't know. 
Um, but here I commented that uh, in the video, I attempted to tell the story about a federal employee of the National Weather Bureau, Joseph Odsley, and, uh, okay, it was 57. Uh, so you can read about it here, and then there's some links. This has nothing to do with Donald Trump, by the way. Um, but back then, what we don't remember, what we forgot about, and I was, uh, well, a year later, um, what we don't remember is how crude and well, how much changes, how many changes have been made, you know, by the Weather Bureau and uh, all the different branches. And I mean, it's not just somebody forecasting, you know, the weather for Kansas City, Missouri or Fort Worth or whatever. You know, it's a, they have a lot going on. They have a lot on their plate. They have people who are doing forecasts for shipping. They have uh, aircraft, you know, not just over the United States, but they have responsibility for, uh, they have a lot going on, a lot of different offices, a lot of different people. And uh, back in 1957, I didn't know that that uh, till recently, the weather, and it was using teletypes, you know, so they would, you know, do the teletype and the teletype would appear, you know, in a radio TV station would pop up there and the people could read it and uh, on the air, you know, that type of stuff. They really, the Weather Bureau was working really with, uh, I'm sure back then they probably thought it was state of the art, but pretty crude. And the Weather Bureau back then uh, did not allow, you know, it was, I'm not sure if, how they had it spelled out, but, the, you know, the people doing these reports, they were not allowed to say tornado warnings. They couldn't put, you know, or I'm not even sure they could put severe thunderstorm. They definitely could not put tornado warning because it was considered back then, the management or whatever considered it, well, we're not able to really predict, you know, that it, it's a tornado and it would be, you know, uh, we don't want to alarm people. We don't want to, uh, whatever, but uh, this gentleman here was working in the, I'm not sure what area, there's some links that will tell you about it, his complete story, in fact, or the complete story of uh, the Ruskin Heights tornado. But he was there and he got, uh, was getting the data you know, crude radar thing with the, you know, the loop or whatever, uh, reports from a couple different aircraft that saw a tornado on the ground and whatever. So he, he put out, you know, a urgent, you know, tornado warning, take shelter, you know, take shelter or whatever. And in the storm traveled like 71 miles, I think it was, on the ground killed a few people and it got to Ruskin Heights area. I think it was 41 people were killed. I mean, Ruskin Heights was leveled. And because of the warning that he put out, there was people when they, you know, they took shelter then because they'd never heard tornado warning. It's coming, you know. And, uh, one of the stories here that I linked or whatever, I think it was 30 people or whatever, where they were piled on top of each other in a basement. By the way, the Ruskin area did not, for those homes, they did not have a lot of basements. I know because, um, let's see, this, this storm hit in 57. I was in high school. My mother was an LPN. When the storm hit, she went out to a uh, licensed practical nurse. She went out to uh, Ruskin Heights and volunteered to help. I was in high school, but I was in the uh, Civil Defense, the Ground Observer Corps. Uh, we, 
watched for <coughs> enemy aircraft. Our post was up on top of the military uh, army record center on their roof. And uh, there's the little badge that I had. United States Air Force, GOC, Observer. Um, there's a link to a little bit of information about that, about the Ground Observer Corps. Well, they were disbanded. The Air Force didn't need us any longer. And uh, in 1958, one year after Ruskin Heights, uh, I was still in the Civil Defense, but the Ground Observer Corps was, Air Force no longer needed us. And so we were trained to become weather observers. And we were told uh, by the guy who came from the Weather Bureau for our training that we were the first trained weather observers. I find that hard to believe that in 1958, but that's what we were told. Maybe he meant the first weather observers for the greater Kansas City area, or maybe meant the first for Kansas City, I don't know. But anyway, we were told that we were the uh, first trained weather observers, probably because one year before that, Ruskin Heights had 41 people killed in a uh, um, in See, I started to work at St. Joe Hospital in 72. Okay, in 1970 or 71, someplace in there, something like that, I had a patrol service for about a year. I patrolled. And um, the area that I mainly patrolled was a private company. I was it. <laughs> Owner, manager own the employee, et cetera, you know. And so I had signed up Ruskin Apartments, which had been totally leveled in the storm of 70, 57. Uh, and I had a few shops in the Ruskin Shopping Center and a few other pl businesses and places around there. That was my, that was the area that I patrolled. And when it would get cloudy, or especially if the alarm si siren sounded or whatever, all the people in the Ruskin area would be, they'd come out of their house and they'd be looking up at the sky and whatever. That was how traumatic that storm was and how much it scared those people. And then um, when would that have been? My wife and I, we lived in Ruskin Heights in one of those houses that had uh, been in that area and probably was destroyed. I don't know. No, it seemed like it was pretty old. Anyway, uh, it had no basement, by the way. And uh, But anyway, the, uh, the gentleman here, that the weatherman who went against, you know, standard operating procedures against you know, who put out the warning on the teletype tornado. Uh, he really did not get the record. He undoubtedly saved, because there's a couple of videos I think I've linked in here too. And I think in one of the videos they talked about like 30 people went and jumped into a, a basement or a shelter and they were like on top of each other when they heard it, you know, and they were saved where others, you know, who uh, didn't make it. So he was undoubtedly a uh, hero, a, a just a, you know, rank-and-file weather department employee, and he got zero recognition. Uh, you can read in the one of the, the things I've linked here that his boss said back at the time, uh, he was just doing his job. So about 50 years later, whatever, a book comes out, and finally he gets uh, the recognition that he deserved for actually, you know, being a hero and uh, saving lives. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention was, so I, I posted some comments, well, the links that you see underneath this video that I made. 
but let me go to, oh, that's where I needed to go. Let me go to my channel page. That's it. Uh, I think I asked one time, nobody commented. How many of you see up here community? You know, it's home, video, playlist, community. Are you actually seeing community? Because nobody's really commenting or anything. So I posted, which is a copy of the thing that I posted as a comment just here. I posted uh, about the National Weather Bureau and uh, the uh, Ruskin Heights tornado with some links and whatever here. I never see anybody commenting here at all, and I'm not sure. Maybe this is a function that is not turned on for uh, for my site. So you might let me know. Well, of course, people. That's, that's another thing. People don't go to the home page or channel. But if you do go, do you see community up here? Uh, so here's what I, you know, I have posted in here. By the way, this lady here just did a, a YouTube video. She does them all the time. And I think it's her most recent video. She posts about a, a laser device. It's about $300, I think. And she says it's well made, you know, stainless steel or aluminum or whatever. And it's a laser thing and it projects all time. There's a, it comes with a program where you can do all types of stuff on the walls, moving all kinds of really interesting things on, on your wall. Be great for parties, businesses, advertising, all types of stuff. But the device also is a laser engraver. And it will engrave, I guess, in plastic and aluminum and things like that. She showed, she demonstrated that. But the that laser will put your eyes out. It will it will put your eyes out. I mean, it's massively strong. And so when she did this review, got to give her credit. She's saying this company needs to have something built in there that if anybody gets in front of it, it shuts off. And I think she said even, which I think is a good idea, separate them, have, you know, the laser just thing for displays and then have a laser, you know, engraver but with because but anyway a neat device but totally scary i doubt it would be approved even in the united states uh i think it would be without some type of restrictions um say what else there was something else i wanted to no that's not it that's not it um, that's not it. What else did I want to mention? I mentioned that we lived in the Ruskin area after the storm. I mentioned that I had a patrol service and I patrolled, you know, the, the mall that, or the, not a mall, it was, you know, strip mall or whatever, Ruskin Heights Shopping Center and the Ruskin Heights apartment and Whatever. Um, North Korea testing a creative weapon that could threaten the U.S. You know, I hope that hope we're not turning space into you know that was something that sort of agreed by the United States and the USSR or whatever, that we would not weaponize space. But I'm afraid... I'm afraid we're heading that direction. That's going to be really scary when North Korea or who knows, you know, 
when they can put something up in space to come down, you know. Or just think, even if they didn't, of course, it'd be an act of war. If it, but just think if they just took out um, our communication satellites or, uh, you know, the GPS tra <laughs> tracking. Uh, I mean, it's just we Trump wants to create a space force. What is he? Was it a another branch of the military that's going to space patrol or whatever? Uh, we we need somebody's we need stability and we need to be working to make agreements and working to do what we can to protect you know the United States and all of the world. If somebody gets up into space and starts doing stuff. One, you're just not going to have any warning. And then two, that the damage it could could do could be, you know, catastrophic. Um, there's so many dangers in the world. We need we need people who are sane, moral, decent, hardworking, thinking educated people, you know, working to solve our problems. We don't need unstable people that are uh, <sighs> creating problems for us. Oh, I wanted to mention something else. You know, this audio has been working really well for me with this microphone, you know, with this headset. But... Let's see, Amazon's what I'm looking for. Amazon. Where is Amazon? Uh, let's see, list. Oh, by the way, yes. Let me show you that. Please use the link. When you see a link underneath, you know, on one of my pages or whatever, or just not even that, you know, uh, okay, here we go. Pavement history. Last month, uh, from people clicking on a link and going to my Amazon thing, I made two dollars and twenty cents. The month before, I made a dollar seventy-four. Uh, you know, so altogether it's three ninety-four. I only get paid when it reaches ten dollars. You can see here. You know, uh, it doesn't cost you anything, and the money that uh, let's see, Amazon. The money that I would make that way. It could be um, could be nice. Let me purchase things and uh, um, but anyway, this headset that I'm using has worked out. The audio has worked out really well. But I saw some reviews on YouTube of see what am I looking for? Yeah, okay. So. Here it is. This got really good reviews. It's a lot. I'm using a Logitech mouse. I'm using a Logitech keyboard. I'm using two Logitech webcams. And this is the Logitech G Pro X gaming headset. And it's $129. Uh, now, let me show you something to make it easier for you. If you're going to be buying something on Amazon or just going into look, if just type in jimhoward.me, jimhoward.me, and just click on that and uh, go there. Now here you are at my, you know, Amazon store. Now you don't have to 
go to, you know, any of these and buy any of these things. Uh, just going to jimhoward.me. And if you go any place, and uh, let's see, what did we just see here? Whoops. Okay. Just go any place. Now, if you purchase this, uh, which, by the way, appears to be the uh, <laughs> one I purchased. Let's see. Should say that I purchased it. Uh, maybe it's a different model. Uh, but that's one I have it. I have it. I have the LG, and it looks exactly like. No, the base is different on this one. Um, but uh, maybe this is it. Well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, if you go in and buy anything, I will get a. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. <clears throat> I'll get a commission. Then I can. Uh, buy a few of these things that I want, and then if they're any good, I can uh, review them for you. So, so there again, just remember, uh, let's go over here. Jim Howard, J-I-M-H-O-W-A-R-D dot M-E. Hit enter. And then whatever you're going to purchase at Amazon, purchase it, and I should get a uh, commission for it. Let's go back to this because uh, I want to show you something. Let's see. Now here you can see things that people have purchased, and I I cannot link you know i don't know you know i do not know who purchased a little seagull handbook with exercises i don't know who purchased a raisin in the sun uh whatever so there's no way i can tell what you you know what you purchased or whatever it just shows me that somebody purchased it and uh whatever it shows you that I've had uh, 135 for, I think, the last 28 days, 30 days, 135 clicks, 21 items were ordered, 16 were shipped, and uh, they made uh, $331, and I made $16.29. I'm not sure why it says 16. I guess, I guess that's what's going to show up later on this payment history. I don't know. Because you can see that uh, I'm not getting rich on Amazon commissions over here. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.